We should now look at some color tiles. There are so many different activities one can do with the color tiles, it's almost endless. So we should show you two or three wonderful activities one can do with the color tiles. The first one is to ex explore and experiment with what's known as polyominoes. These were made popular by Martin Gardner, I guess about 20 or 30 years ago. And the task is, given squares, you'll be putting them together side by side. So let's see if we can mathematize it. So if there's one square, there's not a lot I can do with one square. It just sits as it is. But let's say if we have two squares, and the task is to put two squares together side by side, not vertex to vertex, but side by side. So the question is, how many different arrangements can I come up with? So clearly, that's one way of doing it. But let's say this arrangement. Now, clearly, these are congruent. I can take this shape, and I can superimpose this shape on top of that one. So if I have two squares, there's just one arrangement I can come up with. And this particular configuration is called a domino. So with one square, I can come up with one arrangement. Two squares, just one arrangement. So let's now extend it. What if I were to give you three squares? How many different ways can I attach them? Well, let's see. Clearly, one way would be this. But let's see if we can come up with another way. Well, I guess I can do this. So with three squares, there are two different arrangements, one and two. And I don't think I can get a third one. These are called trominoes. So with one square, I can come up with one arrangement. Two squares, one arrangement, referred that now this is referred to as a domino. Three squares, trominoes. Now you can see where the investigation is going. Well, what happens if I have four squares? How many different arrangements can I make? Well, let's play around with this for a while and see what happens. And the rule is side by side. So this is clearly one. So let's start off with a rectangle. Now let's see if we can make another arrangement. Well, that's three. And let's keep the three base. And so we now have another one. So we have two arrangements. Now can you see some more? So let's see. Let's put that up. So we have two. Well, let's see. I guess I can make one looking like a T. So I've got an I, one looking like an L, a T. I wonder, can you see any other possibilities? Well, if I get four, oh, I guess I can make this one as well. I get the four. Now I wonder, is there still another one I can make? Can you see another possibility? I'll leave that up to you to explore the other possibility. These are called the trominoes. And the final one, the one that most people are familiar with, are pentominoes. And the pentominoes are made from five squares. So let's see the pentominoes. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five squares. And here's another arrangement for five squares. And let's see if I can make one more with five squares. So here's another one with five squares. In fact, there are 12 possible arrangements by putting the five squares together. So an interesting task to ask the students is, how many different ways can I arrange five squares side by side to make shapes? There are 12 ways. They're called pentominoes. But there's some other tasks one can give the students immediately after that problem. And that is, my sense says, is that there's an area problem here and perimeter. In each case, the area is five square units. But what about the distance around? And it's always nice to connect the area and perimeter for students. So this one, you can see the perimeter is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this one is a bit disturbing to students for them to see that in both cases, the area is the same, but the perimeter is not the same. Fascinating one to do, and they can classify these using Venn diagrams. And finally, we can come up with the hexominoes, which is six of these. So let's look at the hexominoes. And I like the hexominoes for different reasons, because if you look at this arrangement of six, and you look at this arrangement for six, you see something which is really beautiful here. Because I think you can see the, these as nets for cubes. So for example, 
if I were to cut this configuration out and fold it, I'd get a cube. Similarly, this one will also make a cube. Now, this task is fascinating for many, many reasons. There are 35 different ways I can arrange these six squares together. So the question is, of the 35 different ways I can arrange the six, how many of them, when folded, will give me uh, a box? Fascinating. And there are 11. We can also use this, the task for area. If I look at this, the area of that is clearly two square units. So I can ask my students, how many different, say, rectangles can I make with one square? How many different rectangles can I make with two squares? It's a rectangle. The area of that is two. And we can see the perimeter is two, four, six. Well, what about three squares? How many different rectangles can I make? Well, it seems to me I can only make one. But notice something else that's happening here. It's three times one. So I'm showing them that one way of representing multiplication is as a rectangle. Well, what about four? Now, this is where it really takes off. Because not only am I showing multiplication, I'm also showing factors. Because here four squares, I can come up with a four by one or a two by two. So what are the factors of four? The factors of four, one, two, and four. So I can now ask my students, what if I were to give you eight of these tiles, how many different rectangles can you make? They're getting the multiplication tables, and they're also getting factors from it and area as well. We can all also use the tiles to demonstrate some patterning and algebra tasks. So for example, here's one particular example. If this is stage one, this is stage two, this is stage three, the students see how the pattern is growing. So a question can be, what do you think, if this is stage one, stage two, stage three, how many tiles will be in stage four? What will it look like? How many tiles will be in stage five? In fact, how many tiles do you think will be in stage 20? And give me the reasons why you um, have come up with that answer.